All right, guys, welcome to a new video. In today's analysis, I'm going to analyze the work of a number six off the ball. So let's see what should do a possession football number six or defensive midfielder off the ball, but when his team is in possession. In this video, I'm going to use the last PSG game because it's one of the game I was working on recently. It fits the purpose and just makes my life a little bit easier. As you may know, PSG want to build short from the back with positional play in order to dominate possession. In this context, the first role of the number six is to bring numerical superiority and tactical balance. In this game, PSG was playing with Paredes number six in front of the three-man defense. Verratti and Alves were completing the midfield. The most convenient build-up to play short is to always keep a plus one against the first wave of pressure. Here, there's a good numerical superiority. Defensive me doesn't need to drop, otherwise there would be too many against the first wave of pressure. The second striker's role was to block Paredes. Marseille coach knows him well from La Roma. In these conditions, it was harder for him to play interesting passes. A solution for his team would be what he brought off the ball. Here, Marseille's press against PSG's build-up. It's four against three. The number six brings numerical superiority to keep tactical balance. They should not lose the ball. Again, same principle. Now Verity drops, so Paredes goes up to keep the same balance. The 5v4 situation means control. There was quite a lot of rotational movement between Paredes and Verratti, with the same purpose of tactical balance. And here, Paredes offers support to unlock the situation. Paredes drops, Verratti higher, and the situation is under control. Numerical superiority is a very simple yet key principle to positional play. And if you're not convinced by what I explained, here's a counterexample. Here, Marseille press with five men. No numerical superiority, no control. And logically, PSG end up losing the ball. The second task of a number six is to create space and solutions for his teammates. Here, Paredes is man-marked, which makes it way more difficult for him to touch the ball. But then he must move smartly to create space around him. Does superiority at a good move to make Silva free. The centre-backs must bring the ball forward now. He's stepping back to give an option. This invites the pressure from the striker. And Silva can be the free man again. Another example with a midfield rotation. Paredes will step and bring his marker to create even more space for Silva. Even Verratti shows what to do. But here, it doesn't take advantage of it and passes sideways. The space is still there, but PSG kept it a little bit too slow in this game, to be honest. Checks around his shoulder. Danny brings Balotelli away. Bob's your uncle, he's a free man. This tactical pattern would work over and over again. And finally, a number six must be able to create pass lanes. Here Silva's got some space, but there's something else. 
Paredes checks for Alvaro's position. And then he's gonna move his body out of the way to open the pass lane. Those details tend to go unnoticed and look simple, but how many do it really well? Classic Paredes Verratti switch. And there you see Paredes takes advantage of the man orientation to free a good pass lane forward. Not used by Verratti. Paredes to compensate for Silva's position. Look how Verratti freezes to keep the pass lane open. And defenders don't dare stepping out and break the defensive structure. Now you understand how it works. Number 6 can be useful without touching the ball. But it requires a good intelligence and a lot of communication. Paredes checks behind him and Verratti asks Silva to come forward. Di Maria drops and Paredes shows what to do with his hand. They are just endless examples in PSG's build-up. One step back to create space. And then playing with man marking. Communication is essential. Paredes shows what to do to Silva. Same process. The defender feels there's something wrong, but it's too late. What would be the solution against that? Opponents could try a zonal approach instead of man orientation, but then it would be easier for the best midfielders to touch the ball. Sometimes poison has to be chosen. All right, thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed the analysis, if you did please hit the like button. Don't forget you can support the channel on Patreon and follow me on Twitter. See you next time.